Good morning, SCC families, and welcome back to another family worship here at Seattle Community Church. Now, my name is Esther, and I am the Children's Ministry Director here at SCC, and I am so excited to welcome you guys back to another family worship here with us this morning. Now, before we dive into our family worship lesson for today, I've got a few announcements for you all. I cannot believe it is already the last Sunday in March, which means that next week we are getting ready to celebrate Easter. And that means that you guys have one day left to submit your videos of your kids in order for me to include them in our video, which will premiere on Easter Sunday during our online worship service. Now, to submit your video, please go to tinyurl.com slash scc eastervideo 21 And remember that you are going to ask them the following two questions. What is your favorite part of Easter? And then secondly, why do we celebrate Easter? Now make sure to submit those videos by tomorrow so that I can include them in our compilation for everyone to see and to celebrate on Easter. And also please remember to RSVP for our Easter basket delivery, which will be next Saturday. I will be going around and visiting you all at home, saying hi, checking in, and also dropping off some very special baskets full of treats for your kids. And those baskets will also have a craft as well as a game piece, which you guys will need if you're going to participate in our Easter extravaganza next Next Sunday after the main online service. So it'll be around noon and if you guys could RSVP for that you can use the same Google form at tinyurl.com slash scc easter egg 21 and that Easter extravaganza will be online um, but you'll need two of those pieces from the Easter basket so I encourage you to sign up for both of those but no worries if you can't and if you have to change your plans please email me at children's at Seattle Church Org. Now, since we are getting ready to celebrate Easter next week, that means that today is Palm Sunday. So for Palm Sunday, I'm excited to welcome you all to join us for our worship lesson today. Now, it is also our final Bake Off challenge. We've had so much fun learning to be patient whenever we have to wait. Now, patience is something that you need when you're baking. Well, really, it's something you need for the rest of your life, too. Patience is waiting until later for what you want now. Now, as I mentioned before, today is actually a very special day that we celebrate every single year. It happens on the Sunday before Easter. Do you guys remember what today is? That's right, it is Palm Sunday. And it's a chance for us to celebrate how Jesus came to the city of Jerusalem before Easter. Now, I know some of you guys have heard this story before. In fact, a lot of you guys submitted videos last year to help us tell this very same story. And if you guys haven't seen that, I encourage you to go check it out on our YouTube channel. It is so much fun. You guys did a great job. Now, before we review this story again today, let's check in one last time with our friend Graham as he journeys to become a master baker. What's up, everybody? My name is Graham, and you'll never believe it. I graduated from baking class. <laughs> It was an intense two and a half week course, but I made it to the end. And to celebrate, I made a cake. Okay, I know it may not look like much now, but when I add the frosting, it's going to look amazing. Of course I'm not gonna frost it yet, because the cake is still warm. That's something I learned in class. If you try and frost a cake while it's still warm, everything falls apart. So, you gotta let it, you know, chill. Oh, hey, while we wait, let's talk about patience. Patience is waiting until later for what you want now. So, let's wait. Still warm. Yeah, waiting is boring. Oh, I know something that might help. Let's set a timer. I figure it'll take half an hour for the cake to cool, so. Yeah. A 
Okay, how much time has passed? 30 seconds? Oh. oh. Waiting is so hard. I just want to finish this cake so I can celebrate. Today's story has a big celebration in it. And the people celebrating had been waiting for a long time. You should check it out. I'll count the seconds. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. For hundreds of years, God's people had been waiting on a savior for rescue. Every year at Passover, they celebrated how God had freed them from slavery in Egypt, and they looked forward to how one day, God would rescue them again. Lord, save us! The city of Jerusalem was filled to overflowing for Passover, and news of anything unusual spread quick as flame. They say Jesus is coming into the city. That teacher fella? He made somebody alive again, even though they were dead. Lazarus? Well, if you believe that sort of thing. My cousin Sarah saw it with her own eyes. Excitement and tensions ran high in the city, and as the people prepared to celebrate, the religious leaders hatched their own plans. This Jesus is trouble. He says too much. He does too much. Then we'll have to do something about that, won't we? A short distance away near the town of Bethany, Jesus was indeed preparing to make his way to Jerusalem. He called two of his disciples, maybe Peter and John. Go into the village. As soon as you get there, you will find a donkey tied up. Her colt will be with her. Untie them and bring them to me. Consider it done. But wait, we can't just take someone's donkey. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them. The owner will send them right away. Oh, uh, okay, good. The two disciples hurried into the village. Jesus didn't say where to look, so, uh, oh. Steady there. The two disciples quickly untied the donkey and her colt. Hey! Uh, hello? What, what are you doing? Why are you untying my donkeys? Uh, it's like this. The Lord needs them. Oh! Okay, then. The disciples led the colt and its mother back to Jesus. They even draped their coats on the backs of the donkeys. There. Nice and comfy. Sort of. So Jesus climbed onto the back of the colt, and his friends followed close behind as they started on their way down the dusty road towards the city. Though his friends didn't realize it till later, Jesus was fulfilling the words of the prophet Zechariah from hundreds of years before. Say to the city of Zion, see your king comes to you. He is gentle and riding on a donkey. The road was crowded with travelers making their way to Jerusalem. Other people spilled out of the city when they heard that Jesus was on the way. Praise God! Have you heard what this man has done? People actually began to take off their coats and throw them on the road before Jesus. They tore palm branches from the trees and waved them on high. Hosanna! Some of the religious leaders had joined the crowd to discover what was going on. This whole thing is preposterous. Out of control. So tell him to stop. Who, oh, me? Hosanna! 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 Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Who comes in the name of the Lord. Teacher. Teacher. As the donkey carried him slowly forward, Jesus turned to look at the religious leaders. They glared back. Teacher, tell your followers to stop this instant. Jesus took in the joyful crowds. He looked ahead at the walled city of Jerusalem, sprouting up from the rocky hillsides. Then he looked back at the religious leaders. I tell you, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. As Jesus rode on, the religious leaders fell back, grumbling to each other. This isn't getting us anywhere. Look how the whole world is following him. So even though these religious leaders had studied and waited their whole lives for a savior, they didn't recognize Jesus when he came. 
But still, the people continued to cheer and to follow Jesus into the city. Listen up. Here's the truth. Waiting is boring. And it's so hard and it can take a long time. It can even feel like time slows down when you're waiting. But listen, just because we're so focused on what we're waiting for doesn't mean that God isn't up to something. So I say we change our focus. Instead of thinking about how long things are taking to go the way we want, let's focus on the creator of the universe. Let's focus on how he has a plan. Let's focus on how the savior that the Israelites waited hundreds of years for has already come for us, and his name is Jesus. We should focus on those things. Everything else is just icing on the cake. Waiting can take a long time, it's true, but it doesn't have to be hard and it doesn't have to be boring. We've got a lot to celebrate while we wait. That's the one thing to remember today. You can celebrate even when you're waiting. Who knows? Maybe waiting can be fun. Oh, the cake is ready for some frosting. Oh, I can't wait to taste this. I don't have to. Oh, so good. Happy Palm Sunday, everybody. The religious leaders had studied the scriptures and waited their whole entire lives for the Savior to come. But they didn't recognize him when he was right there in front of their faces. They had a chance to celebrate and worship Jesus just like everyone else did. But unfortunately, they let that chance pass them by. Now it's important for us to remember this. You can celebrate even when you're waiting. Even if you're tired of waiting and you're impatient, you can still celebrate. You can still see the good ways that God is working in your life. Now let's pray and ask God to help us celebrate even when we're waiting. Bow your heads with me. Dear God, Thank you for keeping your promise and sending Jesus to be our savior. Please keep our hearts open to what you are doing in our lives, even when we're waiting. We don't want to miss something amazing that you have planned for us just because we feel grumpy and impatient. Please help us put our trust in you and remember all that you've done for us. We love you and we ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. I cannot believe that the religious leaders literally let Jesus walk right by them without celebrating him. They missed out on a huge party because they didn't see what God was doing right there among them. They couldn't see that Jesus really was the savior that God had promised. You see, the truth is God is always working in our lives. So instead of focusing on what you're missing out on or what you wish would happen, stop and celebrate what God is doing in your life right now. You can celebrate even when you're waiting. None of us like to wait. None of us like to go through tough things in life. But God can help us grow stronger in our faith when we choose to trust Him through those tough times. Even if things around you aren't the way that you want them to be, you can still celebrate how good God has been to you in the past. You can thank Him for helping you grow more and more like Him every single day. Remember, you can trust God no matter what. You can trust him while you're waiting. You can trust him when you're worried. You can trust him when something happens that you didn't expect. You can trust God and you can believe that he is with you and believe that he is doing big things in your life 
whether you can see them or not. You'll get to talk about this more during your time of family worship. I've put together three activities to help you guys dive deeper into our Bible story today and celebrate the coming of Jesus. I hope you guys will join us next week as we get ready to celebrate Easter. Now remember, you can find all of our children's materials in our OneDrive at tinyurl.com slash scc dash family worship. And if you guys have any questions about getting involved in our regular Sunday programs or getting involved for Easter this year, please reach out to me at children's at seattlechurch.org. I would love to connect with you guys and help you guys get plugged into our programs here at SCC. After all, they're here for you. Now, I hope you guys will join us next week and I will see you then as we celebrate Easter together. Bye-bye.